Hello adventure seeker! Welcome to Scotland! Traveling is always exciting, isn't it? And who hasn't been in a situation where you thought it would have been good to know that before or where you just didn't know how to react or behave? To avoid that during your trip to Scotland, I have prepared this video for you. These are my 10 things you need to know before coming to Scotland. So listen up, pay attention and take your notes. Alright, let's start this video with a little bit of basic knowledge about Scotland. There are about 5.5 million people living here in Scotland. And here in Scotland there are many languages spoken, although English is the main spoken language. But there are different languages such as, for example, Scottish Gaelic. The capital of Scotland is Edinburgh. It is not the biggest city, that is Glasgow, but it is the capital and they say it is the most beautiful city of Scotland. If you want to know if that is true, make sure to check out my upcoming video that will give you a full tour through Edinburgh. Scotland is part of the UK, meaning it is not part of the EU anymore. So for all Europeans, that means we do not need a visa, but you have to bring your passport. Another thing you should keep in mind when traveling to Scotland is a travel adapter because you will probably need it unless you come from a different country of the UK, of course. Now let's talk about money. As Scotland is part of the UK, they also use the sterling pound here. However, it is important to know that the bills here in Scotland may look a little bit different than the bills in England. That is because the banks of each country prints its own bills. Nevertheless, the value is the same and all of the bills are valid in all of the countries. However, I have read in the internet that there have been some cases of people in England refusing the Scottish pound. If that happens to you, do not accept that because officially it is the same bill, the same currency and it has the same value. So they have to accept it. Let me know in the comment section below if something like that has ever happened to you because I would be curious if that is actually true. International credit cards and debit cards are being accepted basically everywhere. Even in a bus you can buy your ticket with a card. Nevertheless, it never hurts to have some cash with you. You can withdraw cash at the ATMs usually for free. Nevertheless, your bank may add a fee for withdrawing cash on a different ATM in a different country. Compared to other European countries, Scotland is a rather expensive country. Nevertheless, compared to other UK countries, it seems to be a bit cheaper. In order to save some money, you should know when is the best time to visit Scotland. July and August are the most expensive and most crowded months. Spring and autumn are nice months to visit Scotland. This is the so-called shoulder season. It will still not be too cold, a bit more budget-friendly and less crowded as during July and August. I am here in September and I am loving it so far. The UK in general does have a rather bad reputation when it comes to good weather conditions. The climate changes quickly, you can experience sun, wind, clouds and rain in only one day. Nevertheless, do never underestimate the sun during the Scottish summer. Yes, you can also sunburn in Scotland, so do not forget to bring your sunscreen if you are planning a trip for the summer months. In general, of course, the chances for good weather will be the best during the summer months. Nevertheless, as mentioned before, during shoulder season you will still have quite a good chance of sunny days and not too cold temperatures. Now that we've already talked about when is the best time to visit Scotland, I would recommend you to plan your trip ahead and to book your accommodation as soon as possible. That is because Scotland has become a very popular travel destination and especially during the summer months, prices for accommodation can get crazily expensive. So make sure to do your research as soon as possible. Thanks to a lot of TV shows and movies, Scotland has become a very popular travel destination. Doing your research a lot of time ahead will save you a lot of money. Another thing you should keep in mind is that in the UK things close early and that accounts for everything. Doesn't matter if we are talking about pubs or public places like museums. That is why I would recommend you to plan your visits to museums in the mornings because that way you will be sure that you can actually enter the museum before it closes. 
I would also recommend you to get your tickets in advance whenever possible. Usually you can buy them online and this will also ensure you that you will be able to enter because especially in the high season, the demand in Scotland is very high. There will be a lot of tourists and the amount of visitors is usually limited. So if there is something you really want to see, definitely check if you can get a ticket online and book your time slot ahead. And of course, the demand varies depending on the season you will be in Scotland. For example, during the winter months, for sure, it will be less of a problem. But during the months July and August, for sure, you should book your entrances online. I have been walking quite a lot already, which means I need some rest right now and also some water. And that brings me to talking point number five, which is the water quality of Scotland. Actually, the tap water here comes with an amazing quality. It is absolutely delicious. And in the cities of Scotland, you will also find fountains that are publicly accessible and you can refill your water bottles. So I just bought one water bottle because I need a bottle. But from now on, I am going to refill this bottle with either tap water or the water from the fountains that I will find here in the cities, because that will not only save me money, it is also also way better for the environment to not waste that many plastic bottles. So make sure to bring your bottle and keep refilling it to travel a bit more budget-friendly and environmentally friendly here in Scotland. Also another tip, in the restaurants you can always order just tap water and they will give it to you for free. Now I want to talk to you about how to move around Scotland. Here in Scotland there is public transportation and yes you will be able to reach different cities either with a train or in buses but of course you will be way more flexible when renting your own car. That is why I decided to do a road trip through Scotland and I rented a car for around 60 euros per day and I am super happy with it because this way not only am I way more flexible because I depend on my own schedule but also because this way I can reach the most remote area here in Scotland. So I do recommend you to rent a car. Currently the gasoline prices here in Scotland are quite comparable to the rest of Europe. At least what I know from Spain and Germany it's quite similar. It is currently at around one pound and fifty pennies per liter. And also guys do not be afraid to drive in the UK in case you are from outside of the UK and used to driving on the left side of the car. Don't worry I'm sure you will manage to do this here as well and get used to driving here pretty quickly. And also one important hint maybe I do have a German driver's license. I do not have an international driver's license although I should definitely get mine pretty soon. That's for sure. But nevertheless, they do accept European driver's license, even though they are not international. I was a bit worried about that since the UK is out of the EU. I wasn't sure anymore if they would that easily accept my German driver's license, but they did. All right, it's time for lunch now. And this brings me to my next topic, which is Scottish food. Typical Scottish food contains a lot of fish. There are all kinds of dishes with fish, but the most traditional dish has nothing to do with fish at all. The most traditional dish is called haggis. Now, what is that? It is a dish that is made of liver, lungs and the heart of sheep. That is then being mixed with oatmeal and beef and boiled inside of a sheep's stomach. Now, that doesn't sound that delicious, to be honest, but it comes in all kinds of different variants. There are little fritters of haggis, for example, which is what I'm going to try now. So definitely give it a chance. They say it's all about the spices. So the taste is the important thing. And no matter what kind of type of haggis you order, you will get the feeling of what it tastes like. Also, there is a vegetarian variant where they replace the meat with lentils. And they say it does taste just like the original because, as I said, it is all about the spices. That was very delicious and I'm going to pay in a little bit, which brings me to the next topic, which would be tipping. Now, the tipping culture here in Europe in general is not as extreme as in the United States, for example. All prices always include the taxes, but the bills usually come without a service fee. And even though, of course, you do not have to tip anybody, 
It will definitely be highly appreciated just as anywhere else in the world. So if you were happy with the service, feel free to add a tip of about 10% if you were happy with the service. Now, my advice number nine is to put the Scottish Highlands on your list if you come to Scotland. It is famous for its insanely beautiful landscapes, mountain views, rivers, waterfalls and lakes. And I am absolutely in love with this area. I am impressed by it and highly recommend you to come here. The Scottish Highlands are in the northwest of Scotland and this has been the part where Gaelic has been spoken. That is also why this area is also known as the Place of the Gels. I personally would recommend you to explore this area with a car because this way you will get to the most remote places and trust me you will be impressed by its nature, by its mountain views. It is insane. One recommendation for the highlands though is bring mosquito spray. There are midgets here. Midgets are the evil kind of mosquitoes. You don't hear them, you hardly see them because they are tiny but they sting as well and it itches and it's super annoying. So do not forget to bring your mosquito spray. Now that we've already been talking about the Scottish Highlands, I want to talk to you about my last point for this video, which is the climate. Do not underestimate the Scottish climate. First of all, I feel like the weather application that I have at least is not that reliable. And I highly recommend you to bring layers. The climate here changes quickly. You are in the mountains. It's nothing new that in the mountains the climate can change quickly and also that you can move around and at one side it's super dark and on the other side you will see the sun. So bring a lot of layers and put on layers. In the early mornings it is quite cold. Right now, for example, I am here in September. It is around 20 degrees. Even though it's cloudy, do not underestimate it because it feels way harder when you are here hiking and so on. I recommend you to bring waterproof clothes, something loose like a, like a t-shirt in case it will get warmer during the day and also sweaters. Definitely bring sweaters and also very important, good hiking shoes. You gotta be prepared for everything because you can basically experience every single season in one day only. And it's starting to rain again. That's what I meant. The weather changes quickly. Yay! Now, that was it from my side. I really hope you found this video helpful for your trip. I hope you feel better prepared for your own trip to Scotland. If you think there was something missing on my list, make sure to leave that tip for other viewers in the comment section below. And also in case you have any question left, you can also ask them below in the comment section. I really hope you liked it. I hope this was useful for you guys. And if it was, make sure to leave me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel because there will be further videos coming out. So I will hopefully see you in the next video on Friday.